Hello everyone! Um, just wanted to do this little video. I know that a lot of us are staying at home um, and I've done videos like this before but just wanted to do this one because it's of a coaster. I did show everyone that I was doing this um, a few weeks ago, or a couple of weeks ago that I started this but then I've just not continued it and I just thought I'll, I'll just... Um, I'll just do it on a live video. So, I'm going to do a ladybird because I did a slate painting near the, um, a while ago, uh, similar to like one of these. If you all remember this one, this was a, this is a slate painting I've done of an eagle. So I did one of a ladybird as well when I did these, and it was really quite popular. So I just thought I would do one now, um, on a coaster. So they're already, they've got little pads on already um, and I'm just going to start doing it. I've already painted it white because because the slate is so dark um, it makes it easier to get the background colour. Okay, so obviously we find ladybirds in the grass so I'm just going to get my grassy colour ready. So I've got these here um some paints i use liquitex and i've got it on this like tear away canvas sheets i don't often use these they're not the best because they dry the paint out a lot but um just for this i thought i would use them and i have got the classic yellow and blue but i'm not just going to stick with that because um grass is more than just a green color so I'm just mixing my paints. You won't be able to see everything that I do, by the way. Um, but um, I'll describe what I'm doing. Obviously, I've got some water ready here, which I'm using to water down the paint. Um, if you have any questions, I don't know if I'm going to be able to see them. I'm sorry. Um, but... Uh, I'll have, if you leave me like a message or something, a comment on the live video, then I'll always answer on there. That might be the best thing. So just doing this first layer, looking a bit yellowy. That's fine. I'm not worried at this stage because I always layer up these, um, all my paintings that I do. They always get layers all the time. In fact, I've just had a thought. I've got a tablet which I'll set up as well quickly. So if you have any questions, I might be able to view them on my tablet as well. Bear with me, guys. Also, just want to say thanks for joining those who are with us. I can't see who they are. Um, well, not at the moment. If this tablet idea works, then brilliant. And we'll just um, see how we get on. Okay. So I can see the live video on my tablet, but, hmm. Just on the safe side, guys, if you have any questions, then do just put them in the comments, um, and I'll answer them after the video. Like I said earlier, we, um, I don't know why, look at the... Being quite silly, this lockdown situation definitely makes us our brains go a bit to mush. But look at the size of that paintbrush that I'm using compared to like my the size of my finger. That's ridiculous. I'm gonna get a bigger one. What a time waster. This will be better. You can see the comparison to what I was using to what I'm going to go up to. So let's let's be more practical. <laughs> now again, for those of you who have just joined us, this is going to be a um, a ladybird coaster. I'm just doing the first layer, and I've put down white first because that then helps the colour on the slate come out a lot better. And the ladybird was really popular. On the original slate so I thought I'd do a coaster as well. Fancy that. 
So, first leg is down. Oh, I did say it was going to be um that it was going to be green, but actually it's yellow. No worries. I never really worry about these layers. And you shouldn't either if you do any paintings or anything really. So just add some blue and it's just gone to this colour. But like I said, never worry. Because you can go over it, even with um, things like this. You can just go over. And this bit is always quite quick. It's the painting of the animal that can that you should take your time with to get that. And you will see brush marks and things like that, but don't worry about that. That'll all soon go with something. The, let me get my other brush. Like that. I don't think it's a bigger brush just to blend it a bit. Um, it doesn't always get rid of the um, the total brush mark lines, but that's fine. Also, guys, I'm going to just use the hair dryer and excuse the sound. This is like a little thing I do just to speed up paintings. I'm quite impatient myself, so um, when I'm doing things like this, I like it to be sped up. So I always use a hair dryer to dry the layers. And you'll see as it's drying, you, the um, the slate comes through. This is why it's important to put the white down, um, because it adds that. Well, it also gives you a good base to work from, but um, it does also help with sort of putting an extra coat on so you don't see that slate through. But you will get this. Um, this is why on slate you have to have a lot of layers. But we'll just continue on as we go. Not a very bright green at the moment, but that's fine. Like I said, you keep working up with the layers and you'll get them. I have got actually a fantastic, like luminous green that I'll show you um, when we get to it. But you know what? I'm going to show you now. It's fab. Check out this. I bought this from um, the craft outlet shop in Springfield and Spalding they've got lots of different types of this luminous um, paint um, and it just sometimes if you've got a painting well any sort of painting really the best thing is to have contrast so to have something like a green like this or any sort of other um, painting well I tend to do animals but it just adds that bit of punch of colour to it I've also just seen that I've got the the blue as well here um yeah very very luminous and just adds that extra bit of spark to your paintings i think anyway Okay, this will be green, by the way. For those who've joined, we're just layering up the colours on here at the moment. So this will turn green. It's more like, like a bit of a, a mucky yellow at the moment, but it will be green. Do not worry. I'm going to use a different yellow now. So I also remember that um, green isn't just yellow and blue. It's various shades of yellows and blues. And also it has browns in it as well. There isn't just one colour. There isn't just one certain type of mix for a certain colour. I would recommend that you experiment and have a look. So for the first layer, I used this one. So I always use Liquitex Heavy Body Paint. It's my favourite paint because you can layer it and you can get um, different transparencies of it. Um, so the first one I used was cadmium yellow, and now I'm going to use 
Oh, I couldn't even tell you because um, it's covered in paint. Classic. But I'm going to use a different one just to build up the layers. I do this for any painting that I do, guys. So it's not just um, like for this slate painting. Any painting I do, it's always different colours mixed. So that it just adds depth to the painting. Otherwise, it can look really flat, I think. Also, just so you know, all of these things I'm saying is all my own opinion. Um, I am absolutely not sponsored by anybody. It's just what I've learnt. And it's nice to share. So, I've also got another blue that I want to use. Oh, guys, if you could see the paint mess on the floor. But you can't, so I'm covered. Right. Again, so here's the mess that we've created. This is, that's a mess. We had like a sort of an orangey yellow here, and now we've moved to a more sunny yellow, um, which is great. We'll mix it with the blue. Uh, the blue I'm using in this one, guys, is Phaeo Cyan Blue. Um, and again, we'll just add a bit of depth to your colour. You see the different type of green that we're getting now compared to this one, which is kind of like a murky colour green. Um, and for me, I like to sometimes use the darker colour first and then build up the lightness. Um, but we're getting more of a kind of grassy green here. Okay, so I'm just going to now quickly blitz dry this for that second layer that we put down. And then we're going to add that lovely green onto it. So now that that's dried, oh hello Kaylee. I don't know if you're still here by the way. I noticed that you said hello. I think you've gone now. Sorry, I missed you. I am struggling with um, reading comments. I've got my tablet up, but I'm not sure how quick it is to um, send me messages if you're saying hello and things like that. But hello to everybody who's joining, who's come and watched for a little bit. Thanks for coming. Okay, so next layer, slightly more yellowy here, like this. And you'll be able to see as well that the brush marks are slowly going. And that's what you'll get with building up your layers. I'm looking forward to adding that luminous colour that I showed you guys earlier, that'll be really good. Again, not too concerned about um, it looking very neat at this point. That'll all come together. You're always gonna have that stage, whether it's a drawing or a painting or, well, I'm not sure about any other crafts, particularly for drawing and painting. Again, it might just be me, I don't know. But you will always get a stage where you just think, good God, what am I doing? And that's normal. Totally normal. But the, the important thing is, though, I must say, if you ever get to that stage, you must push through it. Don't ever stop and think, oh, you know what, I can't do it. Um, so I'm going to give up. If you can't do it, that is the best time to continue. Or if you feel you can't do it, that is the best time. Because that's when you learn the most. It really is. Can you see how it's like building up now? I'm not, I'm not trying to cover the entire slate coaster in one little, um, in one colour. I'm trying to make sure that it has varied textures. Let me show you. And make sure it varies throughout as well. Okay, textures, why did I say textures? I meant colours, varied colours. That way you've got depth as well, in, even in a small piece like this. Makes it more interesting. 
and just layering it up. Again, for those who have joined us, this is going to be a little ladybird painting, similarly to the um, the slate painting I did about a month or so ago. When you're doing this sort of thing, think about your brush strokes as well. Do you want to? Sometimes it's hard to paint in textures, but sometimes it's best to like stipple your brush. If you've got an old brush, things like that, you can stipple it and create nice little effects using that rather than thinking of, oh, how am I going to create a grassy type look or something like that. Okay, deck. So I'm going to get my hair dryer out again, the classic hair dryer. Bear with. Obviously, I would advise if you're going to try painting, make sure you clean your brushes in between. It can be a bit difficult to paint otherwise. I've just been referred to as Bob Ross. I am nowhere near in comparison to Bob Ross, but uh, I appreciate the comparison. Thank you, Damien. <laughs> dry each layer and it's important to make sure they're dry properly in between is because otherwise when you put your next layer on it's going to lift the paint off um so then you're just fighting with the paint and it's it's not practical so make sure when you're doing any paintings that dry the layers off in between now this is looking not too bad i'm quite enjoying where it's going I'm going to do a couple of more layers as well and then we'll just see how it gets on. And also, like I said, each time you do a layer, you're going to get rid of those brush strokes. But then again, if you don't get rid of them, don't worry about it. It just adds more texture to your paintings. And of course, more texture, little things like that, um, just adds to your painting. It all depends again on what your outcome is. If you want your outcome of your painting to be realistic, then that's a positive. I would always take that as a positive. It all depends. Cartoony stuff, a lot of that stuff is quite flat with colours. Um, so it all depends on what you want your outcome to be. Now I'm going to, so these tones are quite dark at the moment, I'm going to add some white into this mix. You know what, I should have prepared this a bit more, I'm just like having to search through everything to find my paint. Ah, here we go. Now I'll tell you once, I did a, um, I bought this paint and I was absolutely an idiot thinking I bought, so you can get, I talked about two different types of um, colours before, you can get two different types of white uh, with Liquitex Heavy Body. I don't know if you can with other paint brands. I assume that you can. But the different types you can get here, transparency white, which is fab if you want to um, create a sheen. Like for example, if I'm painting a fish and I want to create like a nice white sheen over them for a reflection from the sun above. Um, transparency white for things like that, fantastic. But I didn't, <laughs> well I did realize what I wanted, if you're using things like, um, well, what I'm, fact I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this white, which isn't a transparent white, to then outline my ladybird. You can't get that with transparency white. Much to the amount of time that I had without um, opaque white for ages. I hope that makes sense. Sort of waffled a bit there, sorry. But with that, I'm going to add some of this opaque white into my green to add a bit of lightness into it. Also try not to use loads and loads of paint. It's difficult to get it back in the tube if you don't um, use it all up. Much to my mistake. 
Learn from what I've done wrong, guys. Learn. <laughs> you might have paint some. I mean, even now, look, look at that. What an absolute mess. Absolute mess. Okay, so I've kind of built up this like lemony yellow colour. I'm gonna add a touch of green into that. Oh, God, I am Bob Ross. No, I'm not. <laughs> Just a touch, and again, this won't be the, well, I don't think it'll be the final layer now. Oh, well, we're right, because I want to put that luminous in, which I will show you, which is fab. But again, look, here we go. A bit of stippling. You haven't always got to use a flat brush. This is a flat one. You can see because as I turn it, it goes flat. Self-explanatory, but not everyone knows. Like that. So I've I've stippled it onto the to the slate there, and I'm going to use a dry brush to blend it in a bit. Probably like an older one. Here we go. So I've got a nice old brush here, sort of. <laughs> you know, I did a big clear out of all my brushes about a month or so ago. It's so all those classics that I've used for like this sort of thing. Don't really have as much now. Oh well, more to my uh, disappointment. I haven't got to use you. <laughs> Realising sometimes I just go into my own world. And, uh, you know, I'm saying, oh yeah, use a, use a different dry paintbrush to blend in. Sometimes I use my fingers. That's also just as good. Gets the job done. Oh, Rita, you said hello. Hi, Rita. I'm not sure if you're still with us. But I've just seen your message. Your little comment. Hello, I hope you're okay. I hope everything's okay over in Grantham. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to darken up this um, lighter patch here. Make it a bit more green. Now, a lot of these sort of things, I don't really plan them. Because sometimes I think if you plan too much, then you worry when you don't, when it's not turning out how you want it to turn out. And you also, you add too much pressure to yourself, and it's just, just best to have an idea. Get your reference photos, if you're going to do a painting. Get them ready, and then go from there. Do all your prep work, but don't, if, you, if you're too, like, if you plan too much, you're just going to get yourself worked up if, you do, if it doesn't turn out how you want it to turn out. Be a bit loosey-goosey with it. That's what I say. That's what I do. <laughs> I don't want to be stressing. When you're doing things like this, you're meant to enjoy them. No stress. Now, I'm really liking how this is turning out. Let me just bring it up and show you. So you see, I've got different textures, and of course it's wet, so it's shiny. Um, different textures, because I've like stippled the brush, and we've got um, different um, different shades of green in it as well. I'm going to add a slightly darker bit in. I think we've gone a bit too light. Just so you know, I'm not sure if we're going to finish this. But we'll see how it goes. I'll add a touch of that luminous green in so you can see what that looks like. Because that is going to be exciting. Trust me. It is good. Now, I've not dried these layers in between so much because I wanted them to blend. Um, if you paint wet into wet, things are going to blend better. Um, you get a more, you get a smoother transition between the colours. 
that's why I didn't in here. You'll see I did that light bit here and then straight into this darker green. It blends better together if you do it that way. Excuse your ears whilst I just use my hair dryer, your regular hair dryer. <laughs> One thing that's quite different about um, painting on slate and painting on canvas is when you use a hairdryer to paint on the slate, it gets very warm. So you've got to be careful. Okay, let me show you this luminous green because this is luminous. I say it's luminous, it doesn't actually specifically say luminous on the, t on the tube of paint, but there it is. So let me show you how it comes out. I'll get a bit of on this palette here. Oh no. I've done my own error and put too much on. But that, compared to the other colours, much more um, natural here than this one. That is going to cause some, um, some, I don't know. It's going to be bright basically but we're going to include that because that's what makes paintings for me a bit more exciting i'll layer it in now oh well, let me show you this it's quite a transparent paint so you'll see look can you see i don't think the camera's picking up very well but it's quite a it is transparent so you have to layer this up which is why it's not um it's not a thick paint, it, you have to layer. You can't really see on there, the white comes through the page a bit, but here we go. So nice dry, and we're just gonna put, or oh, have a tad of water. Um, we'll put it on the lighter edge, because that's where the sun technically is coming from. So we'll come from this side. Oh, fab. Now, it's showing up a lot more on the camera, I will say. Um, but actually, on application, it's a lot... Um, it's a lot finer, more translucent. It's not coming out as bright. But it's definitely there. Cool. I'm just going to check my edges. Okay, I'm going to blend that out. Bit of water. And a bit of blending. Lovely. Now, even though I've done this background now, it doesn't mean that it's going to stay that way. You'll find that as you do drawings and paintings and things like this, if you're like me, nothing ever stays the same. It's going to change um, and it's just, you know, it, that's fine. That's how it is. I will dry this though because this is a um, another layer and I'm going to now paint on top of this and I'll show you what I do. There we go. Just double check. Okay, don't get yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I'll show you how it's looking. Now it looks a bit, it looks different in real life than what it does on the camera. But bear in mind, it's getting dark. It's showing up quite bright on there, but it's in a good bit right now. And if we're in a good place, I'm pleased. We're doing well. Now, I'm going to outline the ladybird on this. And I don't know where I put that transparent white. Here we go. Okay, so this is why this transparent white is fab. Um, so, because we've now got our layer on here, this transparent white will help me go over this background and we'll be able to add on our ladybug. 
Ladybug, Ladybird, Ladybird. Right, so here we go. I'm just going to get my reference photo up on my tablet. So if any other one saying hi or anything, then I won't be able to see you at the moment just whilst I sort this out. Okie doke. So, I'm going to use a different paintbrush because I'm going to use a rounded paintbrush because then we'll be able to get the curves a bit better. Let me try and find one. One that's a decent size. Here we go, this one. So not too big. Not too small, perfect to outline our ladybird. I found the reference photo, so we are all good to go. Got my tran my I keep saying transparent mixing white. I've got my opaque mixing white from Liquidex here. Gonna put a bit onto my oh no, tell a lie, I've already got some out. See that's what you gotta make sure of. Don't waste your paint. Okay, so Oh, do as I say, not as I do, guys. Look at all this paint that I could... Oh, rubbish. Okay, so got some mixing white on here on my paintbrush. And we're going to start doing our outline. So, here we go. Oh, pressure's on now. We'll be fine. I'm not worried. Just want to make sure my reference photo is here with us. Okie doke. Right. So just, I might stop talking for a moment because, um, well, because I'm concentrating. <laughs> here we go. Doopa doopa doo. Which way should we go? Let's go this way. Now generally, when I'm first putting this layer, like the first layer down, and this is how I do all my paintings really, is this layer is the bit where I don't tend to worry because you can still, if you make what, what you might think an error is at this stage, it's still fixable. So don't worry. If you notice that your um, paint isn't going on very well, make sure that you've got water mixed in well with it. That way it'll make sure that it glides on smoothly. Like this. And this, um, this white paint is brilliant because you can't see that green through it at all, which is just brill. I always find this bit quite therapeutic, really. Just getting in the colour, in the in the colour, blocking it in. And again, the reason why I do this is. So that when you put those red tones on top, it really stands out. Oh, need a bit more water on that one. What I think I'll do is I'll just put the outline of this in and then we'll stop there because you have all bless your heart sat through all of this and it might be that no one's now with us, I don't know. Who knows? And that's what we'll do. And what I might do is a speed video of this 
being painted in just to quicken up the process. If you've got any questions again, just ask. Don't know what might you want to don't know what you might want to know. If anything, you haven't got to ask questions. Yeah, it's fine. Right. Now sometimes, because of course ladybugs have legs, it looks a bit odd around, doesn't it? It will be a ladybird. Trust. Trust me. Um and of course antenna. I get a bit reluctant at doing putting those in at this point because they are obviously very, very thin and it might be that I need to place them in other places. So I think I might just leave those out for the time being and I might come back to that. Oh, I've just seen, I've also got another um, slate coaster in the making preview just here like a half and half one quite cute not quite sure where it's going or where I'm going with that one but that's one that's in the making I thought about doing like a bit of like a, a yin and yang type thing but I'm not sure if you don't let me just have a check on this I have to get a smaller paintbrush also, guys, don't ever try and fight with the tools that you're using. If you need something that's smaller, uh, to get a smaller detail, change your paintbrush. Don't fight with what you've got. Or it just makes life difficult. That's why I'd always recommend buying like a little set of paints, uh, paintbrushes so that you've got different varied sizes. Make your life easy. Okay. Da, da, da. That is that bit. Sorry, I'm just looking at the reference photo at the same time. <laughs> and that's... Start talking to myself. That's why. Just want to make sure I get it accurate. There we go. Now you might be thinking, why have I left a gap here? At the minute, just because, it will get filled in. But there is a gap a very small gap between where the head joins the body so even though this won't be a realistic um well not massively realistic um i want to try and get it i always try and get it as close to that as i can that is my my main aim here when i do paintings realism is my favorite i'm not the best far from it but you gotta do what you can to get to the style that you want to be at don't you I've also decided, guys, I'm going to put these legs in as well, because it just looks odd at the moment. So I'm going to add the legs and the antenna onto this this bad boy that is a ladybug. <laughs> now the head, I've noticed as well, looks a bit odd. Don't worry. At this stage, it's going to look weird. Like I said earlier, you're going to go through a stage where you think, God, what am I doing? And then you'll think, ah, oh, if you just keep persevering, it'll all come in the end. And you'll be fine. And the painting will be fine. Or whatever you're doing will be fine. No, you don't. There's one little leg. Can you see that? Oh, we have a leg. And then another one here. I suppose I should might be able to do more of these videos current during obviously current situation that we're all going through together i could do more what do you think don't know and then one here oh you know what i am thinking now it looks a bit odd genuine thought but Take my advice. Persevere. It'll be fine. So there's one. Oh gosh, yeah, it does look weird. Not worried though, in the slightest. 
in my head, the paintings always look odd when I'm like midway through. Particularly when you have paintings that take you a bit longer. Oh, don't get me started. Okay, I'm not going to put the antenna on at the minute because that overlaps a lot of the um, a lot of the paint and, and of the body. So I'm not going to put that on at the moment. I'm just going to leave them, but they would go about here. I'll add them in later. Um, yes. Okay, I'm going to just quickly dry that with a, my hair dryer. Now at this stage, I tend to look at my reference photo and look at what I've painted and think, right, is the body the right proportion to the head? Is it the right proportion to the legs? Is the body rounded enough? And in this case, I don't think it is. So I'm going to just tweak. Now it goes up a bit more at the back, so I'm just going to bring it up slightly. Like that. If you do paintings, you can always um, just any tracing is good. If you if you don't feel confident that you can freehand draw them out, tracing's good. Um, it's not cheating. Uh, but if you're quite happy to do it like this, where you just freehand it, that's good. Like ninety percent of drawing, or well, drawing mainly. Ninety percent of that is actually looking. So as long as you've got your reference photo with you, don't guess what you're doing. Because um, it's like everyone can draw a tree. Everyone knows what a tree looks like. But can you draw the tree that's right in front of you, for example? You get a trunk with like twigs coming off it, <laughs> but actually, it's not always what it looks like. So if you if you can't freehand stuff, that's fine. It's not you. It's not a must. You haven't got to be able to do it. It comes with practice. I can't freehand everything that I do, but what I do do is I try, and I always always have a reference photo. I'm not one of those people that can just draw straight from the mind. You've got to have a reference. I do. It's easier as well. And again, depending on what style you're after. Um, if you're trying to create like a realistic style, you want to have um, a real image of that animal or whatever you're painting in front of you. There's no point in doing it guesswork. Make it easy. Keep it simple. Make it easy for yourself. There's really no point in struggling. You're only going to stress yourself out. Okay, so I ran the body off. I'm pretty happy with that at the moment. What I've... Oh, I don't particularly like... See? You'll notice things as you go along that you like, that you don't like, that you want to change. I am going to change something here. Just this bit, this front here. Don't really like how pointy that's got. So I'm just going to change it. See, I can't do everything, but never claimed that I could though either. So just going to round that off a bit. Lovely. That might look like it's quite, it's got a big head, <laughs> but um, that's the reference photo. Lovely. Okay, so what I'm going to do is going to leave it there, guys. Thank you all who joined in and watched. This is where we're at. I did do another layer on top of that white, so the white is um, a lot more opaque now and you can't see the green through it. But this will be a ladybug. Um, again, I'm thinking I might add stuff to the background here, um, but I just thought I'd show you how I start off doing them. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for joining 
and I'll see you all soon. Look after yourselves. Bye.